Democrats are very fast, and everything in a nation where internal policy is uh, rearranged to uh, meet its national commitment. This is how Sudan is after the defeat of uh, the president. Its strategic location, all the new international allies are key in this African nation. Today, in critical move, we're talking about crisis in Sudan, its history, Tatiana Perez is replacing today. Day, Lucia Cordova. El pasado 11 de abril, un golpe militar. Last April 11, a military coup ended 30 uh, years of uh, dictatorship of Omar Bashi. Immediately, a transitional mil military council took up charge of the presidency. The first actions was suspend uh, the emergency state that uh, al-Bashid had started. The protest, uh, uh, recently the Association of Professionals demand that power goes to civilians and that this be very soon. Meanwhile, the central, local central bank froze uh, accounts of entities, including parliament. We believe that you and us wish that all reach an agreement in a short period of time to find and agree an independent national figure to become the first minister. We wish all agree on forming a civil uh, government to prepare a social conciliation and that it reach peace. Let's review what uh, those uh, uh, around the street say. The main demand is a sovereign civilian uh, council to protect the revolution and guarantee its implementation. We want a civilian transition government made of local professionals with, a, with full executive power. We will now review each actor in uh, the country, but first we're going to locate Sudan geographically. There we will find reasons to understand the current instability of this African nation. Sudan is located to the southeast of uh, Africa with the capital Khartoum, as Egypt to the north, the Red Sea to the northeast, Eritrea and Ethiopia to the east, South Sudan to the south, and the Republic of Central Africa to the southeast. It has more than 40 million different inhabitants in one of the poorest countries in the world. It's one of the countries uh, that are the poorest in the world. It has two main cultural groups composed by black Arabs, some Egyptian Arabs, and non-Arabs. More than 22 million Sudanese are Muslims of Arab language, although some talk another different local uh, language. In 1898, uh, it became a country and became independent in 1959. It has had two uh, civil wars uh, between the North and South. The first war uh, lasted in 1972, and the other, uh, the second one from 1980 to 2005. The last one provoked uh, millions of displaced people and at least one million dead. The definite peace uh, reached, was reached in 2011, while the independence of South Sudan was reached. The president. Uh, uh, accused of a share of uh, humanitarian crimes. The oil sector uh, promoted the GDP growth since 1989. After the separation of South Sudan, the country had problems in keeping stability. More than 80% of oil production is in the South, but most of the uh, pipings and embarkment ports are in the North. Because of its uh, resources and geostrategic position, it is a key piece in the geopolitical chess of Africa. Exports are mainly gold, oil, and their derivatives. The main markets for exports are Macau and United Arab Emirates. Meanwhile, Sudan imports from several countries. 
Let's now review web pages that contribute to the analysis we will have in minutes. Europa Press uh, says Russia recognizes the new authorities of Sudan, according to the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mikhail Botano. If, uh, if, of course, the Kremlin recognizes the new authorities in Sudan. We now advance with Prensa Latina with uh, this uh, title, Ethiopia will support uh, the administration to establish a new order in Sudan. It will support a peaceful transition and establish the constitutional order in the South a North African uh, nation. Our support is based on respect to its sovereignty and not to intervention. And the principle of peace, non-intervention in the matters of other states. It also urged uh, the military council to promote uh, problems during the transition uh, process after the rupture caused by the uh, resignation uh, last week of Omar Bashir. Our recommendation now is in rebellion.org. It uh, emphasizes the uh, events in Sudan as another matryoshka. Dictatorship is displaced by another one in the same way. This matryoshka effect as, uh, usually happens in the change of governments of the African continent. One military coup displaces a, another dictator to leave another one as the classic uh, Russian dolls. And Sudan seems not to escape this, but uh, it uh, already happened uh, because Omar al-Bashir was the result of the coup in 1980 now. Now, General Ahmed Wanli Uf, one of his uh, mo closest generals, uh, is now uh, in head. In 2007, the U.S. Treasury Department blocked uh, Inouf accounts together with uh, other two Sudanese officials because of their responsibilities in Darfur massacres. He was accused of being the link between the government and the paramilitaries of Han Hawet, providing them with logistics and intelligence, and they also suspect uh, the uh, conduction of operations inside. In this way, we continue adding more information with our correspondent in uh, El Cairo, uh, Nayara Pando. A pleasure to uh, see you. Excellent day for you and all our viewers. In the streets of Sudan, we continue seeing uh, demonstrations that surrounded the military uh, uh, headquarters and other cities in Sudan. On Monday, they came out to the streets again to demand a civilian administration. The professional association is leading these uh, demonstrations and have urged to frustrate any attempt of the army to disperse the protests. And uh, uh, avoid confrontations like uh, those in the past day, days that killed 60 people and left more than 100 wounded people. The authorities gave, uh, um, were given a 15 days uh, term to reestablish uh, uh, law. Uh, they reaffirmed the need uh, to uh, have uh, an agreed transition. The African Union demands the military to withdraw and deliver the power to a political political transition authority conducted by civilians in a period of 15 days. This has been the term that the African Union has provided to Sudanese military. Let's remember that last uh, April 11, President Omar al-Bashir was arrested, arrested and a coup followed by his Minister of Defense, uh, where uh, who informed the media that the army had decided to control the country in a two-year transition period, followed by uh, a call to elections in the country. And this year, in, uh, by the end of December 28, a series of uh, protests uh, took place because of the rise in basic services, and this uh, ended with uh, the resignation of uh, President Omar al-Basir after 
30 years of being in power, the protests became violent uh, against President Omar al-Rashid, so the army decided to intervene, uh, overthrow uh, General al-Rashid, and call, uh, promise to call to elections. Expectations continue on the streets, uh, and several groups are proposing the substitution of a military by another military would not be the better solution, especially with the problems the country is undergoing. We must remember who Omar al-Bashid and the, his minister of defense who, uh, took power in 1989 with the support of the army. He is one of the oldest uh, leaders of the region, and therefore, Minister Albert Mahur uh, was a diplomat in Egypt and Oman. In 2015, he was appointed Minister of Defense by Omar al mashif and now he is heading this coup against uh, al bashir The truth is that uh, Sudan is uh, having uh, a crisis, and, and uh, the Minister of Defense uh, resigned to the uh, Transitory uh, Council, Military Council, uh, that decided uh, to reestablish uh, the units of intelligence units and police in the country. And what many analysts are wondering is what could happen if an agreement is not reached and if the new transition governor fails to comply with claims uh, demanded by Sudanese people. We will continue attentive to the situation in Sudan by the time being, this is the information. Thank you, Nayat. Uh, we will all review this after a very a short pause. We will go behind to try to find the reasons, the causes that were essential uh, in, for the uh, overthrowing of Omar al-Bashid and, of course, the military uh, commission, who is who. So let's make a very short pause, and we'll be back with the topic analysis of history, the way of history. We're back with you in Critical Move, today with crisis in Sudan, the weight of its history. You see the article from Sputnik, the African Union will suspend Sudan if it uh, fails to reestablish constitutional order in 15 days. The text says, uh, the regional organization condemned, uh, strongly condemned the coup and uh, gave 15 day term to the Sudanese uh, military to reestablish uh, constitutional order. African Union uh, urged an agreed uh, solution, otherwise it will paralyze uh, all the uh, country's activities in the uh, African Union. Let's now review something we were talking about, the reasons of the political uh, conflict that uh, resulted in the defeat uh, or the overthrowing of uh, al-Bashir. The combination of a br brutal invasion with an austerity plan conducted by the IMF and applied by Omar al-Bashid led to his overthrowing. For five months, Sudan has, had been in strong uh, demonstrations against this policy that became protests against the president, which uh, demanded their uh, resignation and his cabinet's resignation. Al-Bashid uh, stood next to IMF that demanded privatizations and adjustment measures against the population in exchange for dollar loans. Nevertheless, uh, the plan duplified the price 
tanks and gas uh, increased 30 percent. Protests were conducted by university students and the Communist Party of Sudan. Then other social and political uh, forces uh, were added. The coup uh, uh, was uh, uh, made with the participation of the ministry, uh, ministry of Defense. Because of this political move, expression of uh, protest uh, remained, and uh, therefore the Minister of Defense, the Executive of the uh, coup, resigned uh, after the overthrowing of uh, Omar al-Ashid. But uh, the streets demand more, particularly they reject power be kept in uh, the hands of armed forces. They demand uh, establishing a civilian government. Until now, official forces have reported more than 20 persons died, more than 100 uh, wounded people, and almost 3,000 people arrested. We will now analyze with uh, Hugo Moldes from Bolivia, political analyst, master in international relations. Good afternoon, uh, Hugo. Welcome. Good afternoon. Pleasure. I would like to ask your vision about the Military Council. We know these are 10 people. Uh, well known in the military arena in the country. Uh, the question we must necessarily make is uh, how did uh, they have any relation with the former government, uh, the defeated uh, government of al Bashir? What about the demand of uh, having new faces uh, with new visions, which the population is demanding? One pos the situation is very complex in Sudan. Uh, Sudan as a state has never consolidated and it has also been some kind of victim of uh, the struggles, for example, for controlling this country by Saudi Arabia, Israel, but on the other hand, China, the UK, this has uh, prevented it from becoming a state uh, in its true sense. In the midst of this, the armed forces played an important role because they uh, united uh, for a long time ethnic diversity in the country. Nevertheless, uh, uh, there has been a pragmatic president. He talked uh, with the United States, uh, with China and Russia at the same time. And uh, uh, intense pragmatism, we can call it, and uh, very few uh, scarce uh, development of internal democracy. Therefore, we are looking uh, at uh, something that is a change for everything to stay the same. I have the impression that uh, the, transition the Transition Council uh, will do the same. It's very difficult, uh, regardless of uh, people asking free and transparent elections. The country has uh, uh, an institution that has been essential in its development in the government of that country, which is the armed forces. So uh, it's very difficult to uh, disassemble this overnight. That on the military side, on the civilian side, there's also another struggle. The professional association has a strong has strong influence on experts in the depend on U.S. entities, experts in their ideology, uh, interferes in internal matters like uh, we know here in Latin America, USA. Hugo, let me ask you something with regards to what they have called civil society. It's not only the Association of Sudanese Society, there's also Students Association or the Communist Party. There are opposition parties. How, in all the, among all the group of organizations that we see on the streets, because this has happened in the last uh, days, in spite of the attempt of the military uh, or to uh, end it, how about internal struggle and U.S. and Israel pressure? 
Sí, a ver, eh, yo creo que hay un I think uh, at this time ¿no? there is an agreement de of uh, forces among the so-called eh, civil society años, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, aimed to finish a military government that has had uh, pros and cons. So we know about murders, persecutions, arbitrary arrests, etc. But in the less, uh, at the same time, it has prevented uh, the expansion of Israel in this uh, zone of Africa. So hay una convergencia. What happens after this? Uh, surely there will be tension. And it's the heterogeneous uh, nature of the society between uh, organizations that are aligned to the concept of liberal democracy that is more a utopia than reality. We all know uh, uh, all this is uh, disseminated by the United States, UK, and the world. And Africa is not uh, free of these. Uh, speeches. And on the other side, a uh, society that wants a much deeper transformation, we find the Sudanese Communist Party and other progressive uh, mobilizations. The left has been important uh, in Sudan, and uh, at some time in the National Congress uh, Party, uh, to which uh, the defeated president belongs. So uh, it's uncertain what would happen, in my opinion. I think that the uh, relation of forces uh, is on the side of those who have uh, influence of the United States, UK, and France, and therefore we will be looking at the, the configuration of a civilian government with those characteristics that uh, useful to the United States as a containment wall to China and Russia, and even the relations that uh, uh, they fear with Turkey. Let's uh, add to this analysis Francisco Contreras, sociologist, international analyst. Good afternoon, Francisco. Thank you. Francisco, there is a clear demand by the so-called civil society, which is to be part of the transition government in the different dimensions. Yeah. Are there signs uh, that this will be so? How do you see it? What we are looking at this time is that there's a dispute for power in external sectors especially Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Israel, are working to stop uh, uh, sudden change, democratic change of civil society, uh, with civil society, society having more weight in power. I think that at this time the military are keeping power, they are uh, becoming stronger in power, but what we see is that social unrest and mobilizations are pressing these sectors even more. I think that uh, it is still hard to understand the role of civil society uh, with all this unrest uh, among social, uh, social movements. I think that uh, the military still have control uh, of power supported by uh, several uh, foreign actors like uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Israel that is also uh, immersed in this coup, and the United States. I don't think that uh, civil society and progressive sectors at this time uh, could lead a, tra a democratic transition. I think that the military power still has much control. This means that the protests will remain uh, as we have seen because this is an essential demand. In fact, the second is that once they are included in this transition process, they 
that this be very quick and not two years. Yes, uh, there have been some changes, uh, but this has been too fast. The Minister of Defense had to resign. Another one who resigned also was uh, the chief of Sudanese uh, intelligence, Saddam Kosh, who, who was the CIA agent, uh, was negotiating with Mossad to displace Basir from the power, from power, and uh, they had to resign. But in any way, the head of uh, the transition, Al Buran, who is operating at present, uh, has uh, is trusted by the Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and uh, Al Buran, who is uh, at the head uh, in control of power, and it was him who was in charge of the Sudanese troops in the Yemeni war. He was highly committed with sectors like uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab uh, Emirates, and Israel as well. So I think that uh, I continue saying that uh, it's too early to say what uh, could happen. Nevertheless, uh, in spite of the resignations of some uh, key elements in this coup, such as the head of uh, intelligence and the Ministry of Defense, Defense, they still have a contr military control, and it's hard uh, for social sectors and progressive forces uh, could uh, stay there. I see it very hard. I hope that uh, social unrest continue because uh, this would lead uh, more to more pressure on the military sectors. This is what we've seen. Pressure uh, remains in a symbolic way in places very close to uh, to the military council. I would like to go back to you, Hugo, to ask you about the question paramilitary force. In general, Graham appointed the uh, highest authority, Abdel Fattah Mohamed Haddam, alias Jameri, as the second in command of the military council. It has uh, much to do with the history of this, uh, the country in the last 30 years and the conflictive situation in that fold. What does this mean? Yes, uh, undoubtedly, and this is why I'm talking about staying the same. Uh, after my colleague's intervention, uh, intervention, I think that uh, there can also this situation can also happen in the military and civilian as well. That has all progressive forces opposed also to the need of Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States of controlling a country where Al Bashir lost control. So uh, perhaps this is more to consolidate uh, control with a new face, in this case so-called de democratic face. Evidently, we cannot uh, uh, disassemble this without a strong military presence in the military control of Sudan. And I think that it is most likely that we have a change to stay the same, whether with military in the transition, renegotiating the role of the armed forces inside the new polit civilian political power, or we could have a civilian government from here uh, in one or two years, absolutely functional to the interests of Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. I would like to ask uh, you both uh, uh, an essential question. The weight of uh, the separation of South Sudan in 2011. How does this affect uh, uh, the situation of today? Let's not forget that South Sudan has uh, 85, 90 percent of uh, the oil reserves that Sudan had as a whole, and that it has investment and significant presence of Japan, United States, and UK. So evidently, it will have uh, a signif very significant weight both in the uh, region stability because Sudan is the second or third largest country in Africa, and uh, the internal stability of the government that uh, would come out. I would not discard even 
la propuesta no está en mesa, hay un acuerdo de paz que I, se ha separado, ha terminado la guerra entre los sudanes, pero yo no descartaría que este acuerdo de paz en caso de que hubiera un gobierno civil cuando se hace su acuerdo de paz en caso de que hubiera un gobierno civil que pueda plantearse en niveles de colaboración e incluso de integración. Gracias Hugo por ese análisis, un placer, buenas tardes. Gracias Hugo, buenas tardes. Gracias Tatiana, hasta luego. Francisco, me quedo con Francisco I remain with you to listen you carefully. What is the weight of the separation after the referendum in April and uh, established in July 2011? Well, it is clear that Sudan does not have oil. With what they have uh, is, the, uh, is mining, mineries, and uh, it is South Sudan uh, that has a crew. Therefore, uh, Sudan depends on uh, the agreements it may reach with South Sudan. Now, this means that it has uh, to depend, and both Japan, but especially the United States and U.S. Uh, uh, oil, uh, multinationals have uh, lots of business there. I read uh, in one of the media that uh, there had been meetings in the United States with different uh, U.S. Uh, uh, oil uh, uh, corporations with uh, Sudanese militaries to reach an agreement. Sudan uh, must reach uh, an agreement with uh, South Sudan to uh, subsist. The risk is that the agreements with uh, Qatar and Turkey threaten that uh, strategy of uh, Saudi Arabia, United States, and Israel to control Sudan. I think that uh, what the military are trying to do at this time is to control situation, not to create uh, something like Libya, and continue strengthening the alliance with Saudi Arabia and not to uh, leave this road to start uh, other agreements with Turkey, Qatar, Russia, and other countries. I think that uh, the discussion goes uh, in this way and how uh, it will, Sudan would uh, start stabilizing. Yeah, I think that if they are unable to, uh, to keep uh, the uh, social unrest down, there could be other political actors that could also affect uh, South Sudan that had an internal war for a long time. Thank you, Francisco, for your analysis. Good afternoon. That was part of the analysis. Uh, let's go to a second pause in critical mood crisis in Sudan, the weight of history. When we come back, we will review what is the level of relation with uh, the positions recorded by world powers. We're talking, for example, of Russia, China, the US, Turkey, and other nations of the Gulf. We must look at what is behind each uh, uh, reaction to this political situation in Sudan. We'll be back after this pause. The coup against Omar al-Bashir has a strong international view. It's uh, diplomatic relations with China, it's separation with Saudi Arabia because of the war in Yemen. U.S. Uh, oil interest in this nation are matters that uh, are added to the political crisis. International analysts point out that behind mobilizations again uh, Omar al-Bashir is Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States. This is due to the approach of the now defeated president, both to Russia and China. In December 2018, al-Bashir even met Bashar al-Assad, uh, Syrian president. The Sudanese armed forces are furnished with Russian equipment, and al-Bashir had meetings with uh, uh, Putin. 
where the African president emphasized on the Russian cooperation with its uh, nation. They also implored the possibility of installing a Russian naval force on the Red uh, Sea coast, uh, even if the coalition led by Saudi Arabia and Yemen, he had uh, attacked against that coalition. Geopolitically, Sudan is uh, key because of its location in the uh, African Horn near the Red Sea. Uh, uh, passage to the Suez Canal. The re relations between both Sudans were strongly influenced by the interests of the White House. Most ex oil exploitations in Sudan were in the hands of the popular Chinese Republic. The United States has oil interests in South Sudan, and they were projecting uh, building an oil pipeline to go uh, through Ke Kenya in the underground of both Sudan's uh, at least uh, 6.5 billion of barrels are uh, uh, calculated. Since uh, Sudan was divided, uh, Washington started dividing and even added to his list of uh, terrorist supporters for allegedly having protected Osama bin Laden. The, the defeated president, Omar al-Bashid, uh, governed 30 years. Uh, he also started with a coup and civil war, and he had a hard hand uh, in power. Let's see who Omar al-Bashid was. Omar al-Bashid was born in 1944 in a family of a city located 100 kilometers north of Khartoum. This young man was interested in the military career, and uh, uh, he, his uh, career turned in 1939 when uh, General Bashir and a group of officials defeated the legitimate uh, uh, government of Sadek Almadis in 1989. Bashid oriented Sudan to, uh, towards a radical Islam in a country unified with the north mostly Muslim and the south of Christians. He governed very strongly and in uh, over one decade there are two uh, orders of arrest of the international court because of humanitarian crimes. In 2005, he signed an agreement of peace with the opponents in the South that opened way to an independence referendum in the nation that ended with the creation in South Sudan in 2011. Bashir was elected president twice in uh, elections boycotted by the opposition in 2013 and 15, and he was expecting another mandate in 2020, but the coup ended three decades of government. We continue with the analysis now from the international perspective. Each of the actors are placed on the board. We have Julian Rivas, journalist, international analyst. I would like to ask you first uh, for blocks of countries, a African Union, European Union. There is an agreement, transition towards a, a, another government. Yes. We must see if uh, the goal is uh, civilian, mainly, or or put Sudan as a first order uh, actor in the African Horn. Certainly, the Sudanese conflict has internal uh, reasons, but the essence of all this are external factors. Because of its history, some say that uh, biography and history determine the uh, course of the peoples. It is a country that is penetrated, intervened uh, by Anglo-Saxons. And the situation has been inherited uh, to this day where Anglo-Saxon interests, uh, in this case not only in the military cases but the civilian uh, arena as well. In the last years, uh, there has been the religious element, the great powers, United States, UK, Anglo-Saxons play anth uh, anthropological and religious games for manipulation. And in this case, undoubtedly, ethnic uh, and religious conflicts have been uh, there. In the last years, Sudan has been conducted by Muslim Brotherhood, or has been, this is a British cre creation to contain national 
nationalistic Arab uh, movements, essentially. So that game of civ civilian movements uh, is uh, something that Washington loves, uh, humanitarian aid, whatever it invents. I think uh, in the amount of people that are protesting on the streets, how much spontaneous uh, movements is there or how much infiltration by the United States and Israel. Israel has one main concern, which is to contain all uh, expression they believe are against their interest in the mid and long term. So, uh, the first uh, proof for this government of Sudan should have, if it really wants a different route, we're not talking about three years, two, uh, three months, two years, is to immediately withdraw their troops in Yemen. That would be a true proof that it is in a process in favor of peace. But eight months behind, uh, Omar al-Bashid had talked about this uh, distance because it was a distance agreed on how Saudi Arabia and the Allies were advancing in Yemen. By the way, United Nations insists the worst humanitarian crisis of the world today is there. Exactly. So there was already a distance between Sudan and uh, Saudi Arabia and the Arab Emirates. The suspicion that United States, UK, uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, an internal maneuver to take out Al-Bashir is that uh, Al-Bashir in the last months uh, took a different position and even visited Syria a situation that is unforgivable for them. So, of course, there is a trap in one sector that believes that uh, the sector is essentially civilian, but while there's a, a, a concern for Sudan in the future. So, uh, what are the interests of this military uh, committee? The same Sudanese economy tells it. Sudan uh, has oil, but it does not have uh, the structure for to exploit uh, oil and gas. It got rid of an important amount of its territory in 2011 uh, from being uh, the first, the largest territory in Africa. It became the second one now uh, exceeded by Algeria. And it, uh, it lost uh, a territory that has oil. It has still haven't, they still haven't decided how much. But there are series of sectors, uh, the South Sudan, uh, mostly as an inheritance of uh, colonial times, is mostly uh, Catholic, and the north is Muslim. So uh, in this situation, Sudan has a second conflict with uh, broad international repercussion, which is the Darfur. That is an, uh, also has an important oil reserve in a situation of violence that keeps it from exploiting it. And in the Red Sea, that is the center of conflict, uh, there's also uh, uh, oil and gas. Now, uh, Sudan has also two or three elements uh, uh, in the economic uh, arena. It has a very high debt that is something that waits in the economy. There uh, it comes the IMF with the recipes that we in Latin America know in full that also uh, will uh, take the country into a deep uh, social uh, crisis with the increase of gas. And yes, uh, and we must also see the internal nature of economy. This economy is a huge territory with great uh, agricultural potential. The hungers have not been due to lack of uh, food. Sudan has a uh, huge cattle raising development, uh, all kinds of uh, animals, and it also has uh, um, wheat, uh, corn production, and it's tropical uh, crops. Uh, the problem is the property in Sudan, besides Besides tribes uh, and groups, uh, there's a strong presence of those countries like uh, those of the Gulf that uh, rent land, leave one part and take the other one. So uh, there are some economic factors that, of course, have some influence in the market. So we see this country needs to be rebuilt, but uh, according to what? Because it would seem that there are elements and a reconfiguration, but with whom? 
that is President Al Bashir uh, was approaching Russia, China, Turkey. It kept conflict with Egypt, but evidently with nations uh, like Turkey that uh, uh, broke its strategic relation with the United States. So, uh, uh, under what interests should this reconfiguration be? Well, there is a, a state full of conflicts because the foreign military presence is not only Sudan, it's also Djibouti that has bases. The, the coast south of Egypt, Eritrea. Eritrea. Uh, this presence has marked a, a long term conflict which is uh, Egypt's communication with all the uh, eastern African coast that also has access to the Indian Ocean. So we're talking about the control of the seas is present there. So this is a situation, especially a strategic location. Israel, Saudi Arabia have to practically declared a war against Iran. So they are playing, uh, preventing any expression that could block the goals of Israel and Saudi Arabia that want to stop Iran. So undoubtedly a conflict that is no longer a, a short-term conflict, it is apparently endless conflict that uh, compels the states to review their policy. And when President al-Bashir admits that the situation has become complex in uh, Yemen, uh, we get the doubt if this was a reason to overthrow him. There are arguments, 30 years in power, difficult economic situation, but the uh, capacity of uh, manipulating the population to create instability is true because Anglo-Saxons have lots of knowledge in this arena. And uh, I have a last question. Internally, looking at the people of Sudan that have suffered so much in history, the first step uh, to try to uh, take peace, a little peace, that the transition be soon, elections be called soon? Well, undoubtedly the countries with problems look for solutions to their problems, but the concept of transition has an ideological uh, load. Transition to what and where? Undoubtedly Sudan uh, should look at the uh, African objectives, African Union, cooperation, development, but there is a crucial time in North Africa today and in Easter Africa that is there is uh, accentuated military presence, not only Sudan, Algeria, in Egypt, Libya, the coasts of Yemen, there is a very complex picture that does not show any possibility of an agreement of peace for the region. On the contrary, positions and pro probably Mr. al-Bashid was a problem in this uh, uh, picture. We must see that Saudi Arabia has been playing not uh, according to peace, but even to seek allies for weapons. In this case, Sudan, to see if they were respond to their threat, which is Iran. The conflict in Yemen is complex, but it also has incidents in Sudan because the Yemeni's uh, conflict uh, essentially crosses, uh, passes by recognizing the actors of uh, these countries, the Otir, South Yemen that wants to uh, be a state again. This is a problem that the com international community recognized that should be easy because it only has to recover its membership in the United Nations and the others are terrorist Islamic or pseudo-Islamic groups and uh, allies al uh, allow your final reflection regarding uh, my question. A first step to try to understand a solution for a people that has suffered so much? It's difficult uh, seeking an immediate solution. Those 15 days that the African Union uh, is asking to call election is not viable. It could be, but there should be a political understanding because we're saying that there are established organizations 
Communist Party or other organizations like uh, Muslim Brotherhood that have presence in the social life. There are also ethnic communities that are present and have uh, 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 federal aspirations like Darfur. And uh, there could be a possibility with neighbor countries, not only South Sudan, which is a fact, but also the other neighbors. But in generally, the picture does not uh, uh, pertain only to Sudan. It's the region, the uh, northeast Afri uh, African coast that uh, is full of problems due to geopolitical interests in the region, especially the handlement of the Red Sea, which is extremely important in world trade. Thank you very much, Julian. We'll go to conclusions. Some topics to consider at the end of this critical move. By weakening the economy with the separation of South Sudan, the al-Bashid regime started weakening to a serious uh, opposition. Another important topic, the unhappiness in, among social classes due to non-governance by uh, social riots, protests, especially uh, conducted by the Association of Professionals. Another thing is that Israel in the United States are pointed as the main instigators uh, against al-Bashir, and that takes uh, the authenticity of the spontaneous movement on the streets away. This military coup is another example of the Matryoshka effect in Africa, a, a dictator is defeated by another military coup. Even if uh, uh, the former one left one week ago, the crisis is deep, the great powers uh, interest is growing in this uh, country. So we can see this crisis will not uh, be solved overnight. Thank you very much for being with us.